If I would say Breguet, what kind of watch would you think of? Typically, they're known for two styles, which are very far apart. On the one hand, they made name among the aristocrats, with their refined timepieces and decorated movements, sometimes even highly complicated watches, like this Rattrapant and Tourbillon. But we're not here at the jet center to hop aboard a private jet. Instead, we're going in a Douglas DC-3 Dakota from 1944. Fitting, since Breguet also excelled in making purpose-built chronographs for the military. And that is what this video is all about, the Type 20. First, we must dive into the company's history, and more importantly, the Breguet family, to understand why and how they were able to become successful in the field of horology on both ends of the spectrum. The French watchmaker Louis Abraham Breguet set up the business in Paris in 1775. Among his clients, Marie Antoinette and Napoleon Bonaparte, just to name a few. He became known in the higher echelons of society for building outstanding time measuring devices, as at that time precision and punctuality was deemed a luxury. These practical aspects were also highly valued in the nautical world, hence he provided the French Royal Navy with marine chronometers in the 1800s. The company's focus towards aviation was heavily inspired by its great-great-grandson Louis-Charles Breguet. He aspired something else than watchmaking, but was equally successful in becoming a pioneer in his field of expertise. Together with his brother, he managed to invent an early sort of helicopter, which was called the gyro plane. And this was only the beginning. After founding Breguet Aviation in 1911, his goal was to develop the manufacturing of aircrafts. He played an important role in providing these planes to the French military during the First and Second World War and guess who provided the dashboard clocks and wristwatches. In 1954, the firm even became the official supplier to the Aeronavale. The French Ministry of War issued the technical specifications for a pilot's watch, which had to become part of the standard equipment of the Air Force and the Naval Aviation Forces. That is the watch in today's spotlight and where the moniker Type 20 refers to. We will dissect it part by part and I hope you will enjoy this beautiful video. The case comes in around 38 millimeters in diameter. Initially, pilot wristwatches had been quite small, but this was inconvenient for the legibility. The Beobachtungsuhren for the Luftwaffe, on the other hand, were rather big to wear on the wrist, measuring over 50 millimeters. These time-only watches, made by Laco and Alang and Zöne, among others, were followed up by German military chronographs, which have many characteristics on which the French Type 20 is based. Just like the Hanhardt from Deutschland, the case was approximately 14 mm thick. Apart from three specimens made in yellow gold, all Type 20s are made out of steel. The ridged, bidirectional moving bezel can be scaled to 12 or be plain instead. Furthermore, the watch had to withstand some moist and dust, so besides the round pushers, a screw-down case pack is installed. Apart from the functionality, the case pack can provide a lot of history by the engravings and stamps. For example, uh, the contract numbers under which it was delivered by the government and the year or the division it was made for. Also dates alongside FG, which is the abbreviation for Fin de Garantie. The servicing of the movement, just like all maintenance of military equipment, was quite regular and was done via official government routes. Therefore, its history is often well documented on the backside of the watch. 
Dye on hands. Obviously, legibility is of importance, provided by the contrasting white print against the matte black surface of the dial. The Arabic numerals and hands have luminescent material applied for the previously mentioned reason. Multiple handsets have been used, but whether it has a syringe or a baton style, they're always finished with white lacquer to increase visibility. Depending on the movement, which will we discuss up next, it features either two or three subdials, which are slightly recessed and sometimes they carry a circular finish. Many early military delivered Type 20s do not carry the brand name on the dial. Movement. Reliability and accuracy are key requirements. It should run within 8 seconds deviation per day. Also, the manual winding movement needs to have a power reserve of at least 35 hours. The chronograph complication with the flyback function is at the heart of this project and should have the ability to operate successfully for at least 300 times. In French, this mechanical feature is called retour en vol and it allows the pilot to stop, reset and restart the chronograph with just one push of the lower button. Since routes were determined by a series of directions and flight times, a precise measurement of time intervals was essential. With the capability to instantly restart the chronograph with an accuracy within one-fifth of a second, the pilot could be faster when he would be changing directions with one single push, permitting to stop, reset and start a new measurement. This way, the pilot could concentrate on the flight rather than on operating the watch. As mentioned earlier on, it had either two or three subdials. The minute counter is positioned at the three o'clock position and additionally the hour totalizer at the six. Within the minute counter, there are two varieties, either totaling up to 15 or 30 minutes. On the aircraft carrier, the pilot had 15 minutes to prepare the plane to take off. Variations and orders. Starting off with distinguishing the Type 20 and Type XX, respectively the military and civilian chronographs. We mainly focused on the issued examples, but until 1989, one could also simply buy one in the Breguet boutique at the Place Vendôme. Logically, some differences are present. There are no civilian Type XX known without the Breguet logo on the dial. Also, it will never have FG stamps or contract numbers on the case back. Now, let's do a countdown by rarity of units issued. 1100 units. In 1954, the French Air Force ordered some 1100 Type 20 featuring a Volvo 222 movement with 30 minute counter. Following up on a batch of three watches that successfully passed government tests two years earlier. This was subcontracted by Breguet under order number 5101-54 and the case was made and assembled by Mathieu Tissot. The dials are unsigned and it has a closed minute track with Arabic numerals at five unit intervals. The characteristic pear shaped crown should also be installed. The last batch was delivered at the end of the decade. 500 units. In 1958, the Naval Aviation Forces, or Aeronautique Naval, also placed an order. 500 units were delivered between 1960 and 1962. It distinguishes itself with a large 15 minute chronograph counter and the dial is signed by Breguet. Furthermore, the movement is protected by an internal anti magnetic case. 50 units. From 1956 to 1957, the Centre des Ayens Vol, CEV, in charge of testing the prototypes of French national aviation companies, ordered 50 pieces with three counters. Like the Naval Aviation Forces, the CEV also opted for a large 50 minute chronograph counter, but these have a skilled bezel instead. It also has a CEV engraved on the case back. One unit. Apart from the issued models, there are numerous prototypes or otherwise special orders. Here we have one very early and very cool example. In 1954, the fourth Tour de France Automobile presents a route of more than 6,000 kilometers, as always divided into three stages. 124 crews are at the start on September 3rd and less than half reach the finish nine days later. The event was dominated by Gordini de Polet and Guelvi. A mistake by the latter in the third stage ensured the final victory for the Polet Cochet crew. This unique chronograph has been offered by Jacques Polet by Shell, the main Tour de France sponsor for his incredible victory. This accomplishment is immortalized by the case back engraving. According to the provenance, the metal OTO bracelet was delivered by Breguet in 1966. Breguet was not only manufacturer selected to supply these watches. 
Other brands that produced Type 20 models in the following years were Dodal, Oricost, Vixa, and Ayran. However, the Breguet ones are the most coveted, the most valuable, and most sought after by dedicated collectors. They are rare by default. Not all too many have been made if you compare production numbers of other models by different brands, but even more so since they were oftentimes used in combat, and thus many just have never surfaced. Now, if both the owner and the watch survived the battles, the timepiece would still technically belong to the French state. Hence, many were returned, and only very few ever hitting the market. It is drenched in history that is ever so present in its design and cool caseback markings. Breguet still pays homage to this important period and multiple varieties have been introduced in more recent years. Obviously, none of them giving you such a special feeling like the original ones, some of which can be seen in Breguet's museum. If you already own such a piece of history yourself, you could reach out to them to order a document with well-kept information from their archive. And this is signed by the conservateur Emmanuel Breguet, the seventh generation descendant of the legend himself. By the end of the video, I just wish to give a special thanks to DDA Classic Airlines for this beautiful airplane and the gentleman collector and connoisseur Comex 3133. I hope you enjoyed this video.